Uh, our first chapter that we'll be going over today is on uh, a quorum. And this is chapter 11, starting on page uh, 345. So the definition of a quorum is the number of members who, can, who must be present in order that business can be validly transacted. Um, and a quorum refers to the number the members present, not the members, not the number of actually voting, not the number actually voting on a particular issue. So you you can quickly real, understand why this is important. Uh, if you have a society of a thousand members uh, and fifteen of them decide to meet and make decisions, uh, it's probably not a quorum. So it has to be. You have to have two things for a meeting to be valid. You have to have a quorum, which is the a sufficient number of, of members uh, to make decisions, and you have to have prior notice. Um, going on to the next slide, uh, most groups provide their own definition of a quorum, and it should be stated in the bylaws. Um, in, the, in a deliberative assembly with enrolled membership whose bylaws do not specify a quorum, the quorum is a majority of all of the members. So if you if you have a small organization that has 20 members, so and you haven't specified the quorum, a, a quorum would be uh, 11. Um, however, if you have an organization with 2,500 members and you have never had 50% of them show up, then a quorum could never be achieved. So uh, it's important that you, uh, if at all possible, that you state what your uh, what your number is for a quorum. Uh, and Robert's Rules gives some guidance on what the size of a quorum should be. Uh, in specifying a quorum, it should be as large a number of members as can reasonably be depended upon to be present at any meeting, except in very bad weather or exceptionally unfavorable conditions. So even though you have 100 members and you know from his, his history that uh, 20 people uh, generally show up, um, you might adjust it down a little bit so that it's, it's 15, or you could set it at 20, but you need it, they recommend that you make it an actual number uh, and you set it in the bylaws rather than a percentage, because a percentage then has to be calculated every time that you meet and, um, and it ends up being variable. And it's much easier if everyone remembers that it takes 15 members to achieve a quorum. Sometimes there's also a requirement that an officer be present, but that is not necessary. Uh, in the absence of a quorum, any any business can be any business that's transacted is null and void, uh, with the following exceptions. So you can fix a time to adjourn. You can adjourn and you can recess. Um, and an example of this would be to recess for 15 minutes because you need to run around to find uh, some members to constitute a quorum. I know in my condominium we did that one time. We <laughs> we were having an annual meeting and we didn't have a quorum, uh, and so. We recessed for 15 minutes and we ran around banging on condo doors until we got enough people to come down and achieve a quorum. So um, a motion to ratify can be used to confirm actions taken when no quorum was present. So maybe the people who got together felt that it was really, really important to make a decision like we're going to have a fair booth this year um, and uh, because the application had to be submitted. There is no requirement to approve actions taken in a meeting to which there was no quorum. So in this instance, uh, when the, the, the group next met, uh, there should be something in the agenda to ratify the decision to have a fair booth. And maybe the membership says, you know, we've done this for 15 years in a row and we've never had anyone come by to make it worthwhile. Uh, we really don't think it's a good use of our time and resources. And so they, they, uh, they voted down the motion that was passed to have a fair booth, and that's perfectly proper for them to do. Uh, but it all goes back to the basic concept of majority rule. I have a question on Did that, Larry, real quick. Yeah. So, in the, does a quorum, like let's say you're dealing with a geographical reason, region, can you have in your bylaws that the quorum must contain people from each one of those areas or something so that it's a fair group? You know, or, or can you specify stuff like that? Yes. So it, it goes in the bylaws, and the bylaws have to be uh, passed by a two-thirds vote, unless you have uh, other 
other uh, rules for amending the bylaws. But if you put if you put that in the bylaws, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Uh, we uh, there's in, in the Democratic Party of Oregon, there's things where to submit something, you need not only 20 signatures or 20 percent of the uh, the membership to sign up, but also representation from all five congressional districts. That's yeah, so as long as as long as two thirds of the by a two thirds vote, you amend the bylaws to state that it's cool to do. OK, thank you. I appreciate that, because Mo Levy in the audience was talking about a situation with an HOA where they can never have enough people to do a quorum so they can't change the bylaws. And I thought that was interesting. <laughs> um, and then Jeffrey Pearson, I just want to say condolences, brother, um, on the loss of your your brother. I'm sorry about that. Um, Jeffrey was just at a, a memorial for his brother who died recently. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so we had a very interesting discussion at the Rose City Unit of Parliamentarians on that very issue of not being able to attain the uh, uh, quorum because the um, the chair of the organization that was also associated with the Libertarian Party and in their bylaws they had stated a percentage of the membership which uh, just like you described they could never attain so they could never change the bylaws and so uh, they finally said you know we're just going to change the bylaws anyway and they ended up getting dragged into court and uh, going through all kinds of litigation. And what they found out ultimately is that there was no one around to actually enforce the bylaws. Uh, so uh, tough luck. Um, uh, you just have to tough it out, um, which is the problem that we have. Uh, you know, we are a country that is based on the rule of law. And sometimes there's no mechanism for enforcing the rule of law. And, and so it's really just a gentleman's agreement that we're all going to follow these rules, just like we expect the president of the United States to follow the Constitution. And then when he doesn't it, and we get mad, they call for civility. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At some point, Robert's rules has to go out the door when we can't get people to actually follow rules. But yeah, it, it's better to elect people that follow the rules so you don't get into these awkward situations where fascism is implemented. Right. And, and I'm just thinking of Roberta's rules and that whole, you know, debacle there. That's one of the reasons I think this is so important is that we understand how to never let Roberta do that again. <laughs>